Hello, I'm Abhinav Sharma from the Guthrie Robert Packer Hospital, uh, reporting here for the uh, FITS on the go from ACC 2017 here at Washington, D.C. I have here with me today Dr. Michael Reardon, who is the Allison Family Distinguished Chair of Cardio, uh, Cardiovascular Research, as well as uh, Professor of Cardiothoracic Surgery uh, at the Houston Methodist Hospital and the Andy Anderson uh, Cancer Center. Uh, Dr. Reardon uh, is uh, here to talk to us about the SIRTAVI trial and its implications. Uh, he presented the results of the SIRTAVI trial recently, which showed uh, non-inferiority of the uh, self-expanding core valve as compared to the surgically implanted uh, valves in patients at intermediate risk for surgery. Uh, Dr. Reardon, what are some other key takeaways from this trial? Well, there's a couple key takeaways. I mean, besides what you mentioned, we made we made our non-inferiority, and we made it with very strong statistical data. But when you look at mortality, one of the components of that, the, the surgical mortality we saw at 30 days was 1.7%. With an STS of 4.5, that gave us an observed to expected ratio of 0.38. This is the best surgical data we've seen in any randomized trial in the U.S. ever. It's so good, it's unlikely to be matched, much less beat. And yet, you go out to two years, mortality for TAVR was 114 and surgery was 11.6. So TAVR stood toe-to-toe -to, -toe to surgery against the best surgery we've seen to two years. And at 30 days, if you look at the safety indicators, TAVR had statistically less stroke, transfusion, acute kidney injury, cardiogenic shock, and atrial fibrillation. And oh, by the way, your procedure time was shorter, your ICU time was shorter, your length of stay was shorter, and your KCCU quality of life was better at one month, as was your six minute walk. So you did good at two years, you did good at 30 days, and your quality of life got better quickly. Those are the main takeaways of this trial. Great. So exciting times for uh, the world of percutaneous valves and structural heart disease in general. Uh, but just going back to the basics, uh, Dr. Reardon, for a general cardiologist or for a fellow, uh, how would you uh, sort out in, uh, in a patient, two patients, which one gets a balloon expandable valve versus who gets a self-expanding uh, valve? What are those characteristics that help you determine that? Well, there are some characteristics that, that help you determine. I mean, about 80% of the patients, I could choose either one and they would do fine. But somebody has a lot of left ventricular outflow calcification with a balloon expandable, you may worry about annular rupture. Annular rupture kills you very quickly. With a self-expanding, you worry a little bit more about paravalvular leak. But you know, this trial we talked about was a first generation trial with 84% being core valve, 16% Evolute R. We haven't even talked about the Evolute Pro, which is the third generation with the wrap, which was presented here, which had 75% none to trace PVL, 25% mild, and nothing beyond that. So that type of patient would be great for the, for the Evolute Pro. If you have very narrow sinuses, I'd rather use a balloon expandable, because if I'm going to get into coronary trouble with a balloon expandable, it's going to happen then and there, and I'm going to fix it. And so there are some subtle differences that shift me one way or the other. Generally, anatomic things I find in the CT. Okay. Uh, one final question is, uh, in someone, uh, let's say a 67, 68-year-old who comes to me and needs, a, uh, needs an aortic valve uh, with severe aortic stenosis uh, and asks me, what is the durability f uh, of this valve? Uh, how, how far down the line do you see me getting another valve? Uh, what do you say uh, to a patient like that? I tell them we don't know, nobody knows, that we have some pretty good data out to about seven and eight years, but in people in their 80s. And we know that valve durability in surgical valves has to do with how old you are when I put it in. And so 67 year olds act differently than 83 year olds. So, so we really don't know durability. And, and, and if they're really that age, I'm gonna tell them, you know what? You're a pretty low risk. If we're gonna do you, we're gonna do you in a randomized trial where I'm gonna follow you for 10 years and you're gonna help me figure out durability. Well. Uh uh, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Reardon, today. Those were very uh, wonderful, uh, uh, that was very wonderful information. And uh, again, uh, this is Abhinav Sharma reporting for Fits on the Go. For more videos like this, uh, please go to youtube.com forward slash Fits on the Go.